Hi guys, and welcome to Word of the Day Wednesdays. It's your girl, author Nicole D. Miller. I know I am a day late, but better late than never. Life has been lifing, you guys, as they say. So I apologize for my delay. But in this season, I am just going to pat my hand on my back that I am moving forward regardless, okay? Um, so the latest blog that I released this week is called Unrewarded. And a lot of the blog is referencing parenting, but you do not have to be a parent or a godparent or a spiritual parent or any type of parent um, to relate to this blog post. I'm definitely talking about multiple areas of my life, but I use parenting as an example because I feel like with parenting, you are sowing and sowing and sowing, and it just takes time to see the fruit from whatever seed you are sowing. And I opened this blog sharing about a couple of my friends who I've watched from afar, <laughs> parents. And in this season, I'm having flashbacks of things that I observed from the sidelines in their lives in regards to parenting. And now I relate so much more <laughs> to how they felt and um, balancing it all. And so this blog post really helps me to just filter through my feelings, process them, um, and navigate them, express them, <laughs> all the things. Writing and blogging has been a great space for me to process, so I highly recommend it if you have not done so already. Um, but in this season of being a mother and having found myself kind of dropped in the middle of the teenage years, it's been interesting. I came across a blog post called The Moms Are Not Okay. And a blogger that I follow for years has a three-year-old. And so as I'm reading her blog, I'm like, oh, this isn't just this age. <laughs> like, it was comforting to know that. And because I have not mothered at the other stages, I really have no point of reference or grid. Plus, I'm the only child. I don't have younger siblings. So there is just a lot of shifting that happens suddenly for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so reading that blog definitely was comforting and eye-opening. But in my blog, I just discuss how I've had to look into other types of community for support, which I'm still looking. Um, but how that was suggested to me, like I've been such a byproduct of community. You know, if you guys have followed me for any length of time, you know. I have lived my life in community for the last two decades. I have such a strong support system that when I've had to go through difficult things, I've been able to lean on them. But with mommyhood, it is such a unique niche and it's like it never dawned on me that I would need actual mothers <laughs> to lean on. Um, and so I talk about that and I also just talk about how the, the reward is really you have to have a long game view of the reward because it's not overnight and it is the day-to-day -day pressing through and pushing through until you see that transformation and so much of the season and this experience to me resembles our relationship with christ and i was telling one of my friends this recently and she's just like i don't know <laughs> But I think of Christ when he served his disciples by washing their feet. And if I'm, memory serves me correctly, like Judas was included in that, right? So Judas betrayed him. Peter denied him. Other disciples fled the scene. So these were men that would betray and deny and reject him. And yet he washed their feet, you know? So it's just a whole nother uh, level of selflessness <laughs> when I think about Christ and when I think about what he did for us and how parenting I feel like is a symbol of that. When I think about my life 
before parenting, I have experienced a lot of sacrificial um, choices, you know, where God used that path to help me cultivate humility, cultivate um, patience, and, you know, character in those choices, right? But in this season, it feels like I'm being called to greater levels of sacrifice, but like while still navigating these other areas that I've already experienced the depths of sacrifice in. And I was talking to my close friend about this who has a very similar path, you know, and I was just like, man, it just feels like I've been living decades of a sacrificial life. And I'm careful to even say it because I'm very blessed. Anyone who knows me knows, like, how blessed I am. But that's how creative God has been in my story, where it's like making sure that I'm sustained, you know, and that his love is still demonstrated in my life, but at the same time, (laughs) cultivating these um, great levels of sacrifice. And I know that, A lot of it is for the humbling because of the exalting. And one of the lines that I share about in this blog post is that, you know, my knees are being nailed to the ground. And that's a picture, you know, of a posture of prayer and how I know it's him saying, I'm exalting you, but I need you to stay grounded. And his way with me is through pain. And I think that that is similar to the path of Christ and others who are disciples can resonate with this experience where you are called to a life of sacrifice one way or another. (laughs) And so right now in this season, he is using a few things, (laughs) Um, but you know, what I what I share about in the blog is parenting and and um, I was just telling my goddaughter today I was encouraging her about you know maturing and all of those things and she was just sharing about how she looks forward to when she's not having to depend on others to make decisions which I totally resonate with that as an Aries I hated <laughs> that others made decisions for me when I was a kid and I just want to be independent, do my thing. But what I had to share with her was when you are a good decision maker, right? When you are maturing and you have wisdom and you can be responsible, when you're God's, he gives you more. <laughs> he gives you more. He gives you more. And he does this so that you're not leaning into yourself. You're not depending on yourself. So even though, you know, you are more mature and able to make wise decisions, he will tailor make your path so that you will keep having to lean on him. And ultimately that is how I end this blog where I have to say it will only be him. It will only be him for me to finish my assignment. (laughs) So if you can relate to that blog post, tap in at NicoleBMiller.com. So the announcement that I want to share is that we are gearing up for our next girl talk. Woo! Yes, okay. Our next girl talk is called Women Who Bounce Back. And I'm so excited. We have a heavy hitting lineup as always. Um, A few surprises with this one. So save the date, mark your calendars, November 24th on Sunday. 6 to 9 p.m. at Ink Therapy Studio. If you are not already subscribed, subscribe to NicoleDMiller.com. If you are not already following Girl Talk on Instagram, go ahead, tap follow at Girl Talk CLE. Make sure you guys are staying subscribed and following so that you can tune in to all of the deets on our next Girl Talk. All right, thank you for tuning in to Word of the Day Wednesdays, and I will see you next week.